friends, it's Deanna Williston from Our Blooming Catholic Life, and I am so excited to bring you this book unboxing. And part of why is it an unboxing? It's over 700 pages, but it arrived this weekend. I was super excited. I have never even heard of this saint until uh, two, three weeks ago, and um, the translator, Catherine Addington, had posted something about him or by him on Twitter and I saw it and there was an article a link she's like oh because I think somebody said they weren't sure who he was and she had an article link that is one of the pieces in the collected works it was about I think turnips or radishes and it was mind-blowing it was amazing it was very Franciscan I would have said it it turns out he's a Cistercian Trappist Trappist Cistercian Anyway, I'd never heard of this saint before, and so I was super excited. It is the first time people are saying that his works were available in accessible English. I'm not sure what they mean by that because every single one of them listed as accessible English translation. Um, so that's pretty exciting though. So what is it? Yeah, 700 pages, no joke. Let me just read the, the two reviews that are on the back of the book. I love to do that. Um, so the first one is by Mark O'Keefe, OSB St. Menrad Seminary and School of Theology. At last, an accessible English translation of the works of St. Raphael Arnaz that captures both the appeal and the depth of his life and spirituality. Helpfully and insightfully introduced by Sister Maria Gonzala Garcia, Addington's fine translation opens the riches of St. Raphael's writings to new readers who will certainly benefit from his simple zeal and the profound wisdom he learned from the cross. The next review is by Leah Labresco Sargent, author of Building the Benedict Option. I know a lot of people have talked about the Benedict Option, so you may have heard of her. She says, St. Raphael is a brother to St. Therese of Lisieux, living in a small hidden life that was burning with love for God. I will turn to his writings for strength in my own spiritual life, and I'll read excerpts to my children so they can see what it means to turn every crumb and corner of our lives over to God all for love. This book is from Cistercian's Publications, um, and you can see it has this little MW61 in the corner. That's their monastic writings collection, and I think this is volume 61. What else do we have here? Oh, Catherine Addington, she's a translator, PhD, is a translator and scholar of Catholic writing in the Spanish-speaking world. She earned her doctorate in Spanish literature and translation from the University of Virginia in 2021. Ooh, so she just got that doctorate as well. Sister Maria Gonzalo Garcia, OCSO, is the novice director at the Trappist Cistercian Monastery, Monastery of Our Lady of the Angels in Crozet, Virginia. And you know, it's kind of funny because um, we have conventional Franciscans near us and their province is called Our Lady of the Angels. So that, that barely speaks to me as well, being the Franciscan. She is originally from Madrid, Spain, where she completed degrees in social work and theology. She has benefited from St. Raphael Arnaz's spiritual message since the beginning of her monastic journey and hopes to help spread this blessing to others through the English edition of his works. Whoa, so we're already three minutes in. What's going on? Have you noticed this really unique cover art? That's by the saint as well. Ah, right? Um, no joke. It does say the cover design is by Ian Blattner, but the cover art is a holy card painted by Brother Rafael Arnaz uh, in Cola Ego Sum in Terra. I am a stranger and pilgrim upon the earth, and it was used with permission. Let's open up the book. So the first thing you're greeted to um, are the two reviews on the back, as well as one by Tommy Teague, author of St. Diphna's Playbook. You open it a little bit more. And is this a photo of the saint himself? What? What? Um, so that's a lovely greeting. And it does say at the top, Monastic Wisdom Series, number 61. So I guessed that correctly. Um, it was edited. Okay, so it was translated by Catherine Addington. And I want to thank her again for allowing me to have this review copy. They did send me this book for free on her recommendation that I review it. There will be a review and yes, I started reading the book, but it's over 700 pages again. So as much as I wanted to read it this rainy weekend, I was putting together the new hermit crab tank and playing Dulcimer and it was Mother's Day. Um, I did read some of it though. Let's see here. 
edited and introduced by Sister Maria Gonzalo Garcia, OCSO, Cistercian Publications, or you can reach them at www.cistercianpublications.org. And then it's Liturgical Press, Collegeville, Minnesota, www.litpress.org. So that's www.litpress.org. Let's see. Oh my goodness. So much over here. The works in this volume are translated from Arnais Baron St. Raphael, Armano St. Raphael, Obras Completas, edited by Albrico Feliz Carbajal, Carbajal. OCSO 6th edi edition, Burgos Monte Carmelo 2011. So, there have been many Spanish editions going on. My Spanish is very bad. I hope you appreciate that I'm trying. 6th um, edition, so, mm, wow. <laughs> but we're, we're really just getting this. So this is new for English speakers. The scripture quotations are from the New Revised Standard Version Bible Catholic Edition which was copyrighted in 1989 and 1993, used by permission. And the book is then, the English edition here, is copyrighted 2022. Like I say, this literally, literally just came out. <laughs> the day I emailed asking for the review copy, it had just arrived in the warehouse, and so they were processing it and got it to me as soon as they could. So you can get this. This is a hot new title, first time ever accessible English. Very exciting. I might not have mentioned that. The contents page. Um, I was confused. I meant I just did a quick preview of the book the other day when I got it because I had to. Um, the table of contents you're going to see quickly is not set up the way I normally prefer to be, but. And I found it a little bit confusing. It'll make sense in a minute. So I'm going to explain it to you so you won't be confused. So it's drawings and paintings. And that is on page Roman numeral 15. And then abbreviations. Map of Spain. Upheld by him, a saint in the making by Sister Maria Gonzalo Garcia. And then a note on translation by Catherine Addington. And then it has sections. So the first one is all the world can give early years and vocational discernment. And then it lists all of the writings that fall in that. So you're gonna see pretty quickly, what I don't like is I don't like the page numbers lost in here. I really want them justified over here. That's just a personal preference, but also you're gonna find, um, so this is an introductory section. I would have liked a break there and then these lists of sections because this is section number one and it gets a little lost in all the other titles. Perhaps that having been bolded or a space between the sections would have been uh, uh, just helped with the clarity of it. So um, because you'll see there's 25 in that first section and then it switches over, but it's a little hard to see. So if this was bigger print or bolder or somehow really marked differently, um, it's just an italics. Italics makes it less noticeable sometimes instead of more. So it's harder to see it where it is and it's not really... I mean, the titles of the writings are indented, but I mean, they're indented like two spaces. It's very little. And I'm sure it's because some of them have lengthier titles, but it just makes it a little bit more difficult to make out. Um, and same thing, and why the page numbers being directly at the end are confusing, because here's the date it was written, and then there's another number. That's the page number. So adding it, fully justifying the page and the contents, would have allowed for more separation between year numbers or document numbers and then the page number that it appears on. So that's just for clarity's sake, it would be just a little formatting issue that I would like. I mean, there's like 101 in section four, so section five C is a little bit hard to see. Um, let me read you what those sections are. They're gonna give you a feel for the saint right there. So the first one again was all the world can give, early years in vocational discernment, Two is a heart filled with joy and love joining the monastery. Again, it's it's a little hard to see. Um, oh, I even missed three. Two is a small section. Three. I thought that God was abandoning me, struck by illness. And there are 63, mostly letters. Um, not all, but mostly letters there. Um, four is shaped in his hands, a path of oblation. Again, these are mostly letters, but there's also dedications of holy cards, notes written in his copy of the little office of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Interesting. Dedication of a little office to his mother. 
So there's a variety of ratings. The majority do appear to be letters, but as time goes on, that changes a little bit. Um, five is the circus clown, the last one in the community. And, oh my goodness, friends, there's 133 in there. And as we move through, that turns, there are fewer letters there, and there's a dedication to a holy of a holy card, and then more meditations that he has. And that section has a lot of meditations, moves back a little bit to letters as we go into section six, a deer that thirsts, the interior trappist. And again, those have letters. They have things that say my notebook, which are tend to be meditations, but maybe they're not all. Um, and there are 158 in that section. Number seven is foolishness for Christ in the world once again. Those are all letters, it looks like. Eight, it is love, the ultimate sacrifice of praise. And these are like God and my soul. And then there's a subtitle. Very interesting. Um, there's also a couple letters interspersed in there and dedications of holy cards. But most of those are God and my soul. Um, section 208 in that. Wowza. Uh, number nine, never stop looking to the heights, prayers, and other undated passages. Ah, so the undated ones were, were put at the end. And... Um, Oh, oh, I've gotten something completely wrong. I'll tell you in a second. And um, there are passages, prayers, dedications, loose paper written in pencil. So they've included everything in here that they had. There's not that many in each section, friends. They're numbered out. They're numbered out. I did not notice that when section nine started at 209, I was looking at the number they ended with, not the number they started with. So... There are a total of 219 of these entries. So it's, it's work number. So it's not just in that section. It's not for the table of contents. That's not where these numbers come from. These numbers come from the number assigned to that particular writing. Wowza, I had no idea. Okay, and then at the end are addresses, timeline, photographs, and a bibliography. Now the first section I said, and it... I did note that it was Roman numeral 15 is called drawings and paintings, but they aren't actually drawings and paintings. They're the citations for the drawings and paintings within the book telling you where they are. Now this one's done a little differently than the table of contents was. So it tells you where it's located first, then the title or description of it. And then it tells you the source of it at the end. So interestingly, see, um, this was like the cover, the title page, or down here, it's on um, what number it is, and then the page number for where it is in the book, and then a drawing of a monk sitting at a desk and writing. The source is LPM 231. Now it's interesting that they're using the abbreviations before they've given them to us, because I think that's the next thing in here. Um, so there's a number of them, drawings and paintings, Ah, and then it has illustrations, and then there's color images, and then we get to the abbreviations. So it's awkward that they were using the abbreviations before they introduced them. So if I was setting this up, I would have put the abbreviations before I referred to them. So they should really be before the pictures. Ah, but then this is very mm, helpful and not helpful. So here we have the map of Spain, which I was very excited that they included. And they have the names of things, but not where they are. They have plenty of room left on the page. They might have put down here, um, like birth, you know, the name of the town and said birthplace. And the name of the town and like where his uncle lived and name of the town where the monastery is. But this is just a bunch of cities randomly on there. And so I'm going to have to refer back to this later. And it's just randomly on page 20. So I would have to get some sort of a little bookmark, which no ribbons included, which would be in handy in a 700 page book to give me some bookmarks or something because this I'm going to refer to often. So maybe, so maybe I would have liked that like on, on the back cover or something, not just randomly on page 20. Now I did start reading this section called Upheld by Him, A Saint in the Making. And this is by um, Sister Maria Gonzalo Garcia. 
And this I found lovely. So it doesn't really say exactly what this is. This is a mini biography in the beginning and it's amazing. Um, and why I tell you that because the footnotes at the bottom are referring to this things in this book. And so I was very confused when I first opened up and start reading it. I'm like, the documents themselves are referring to other documents in the volume? Seemed pretty early for that. And so I was a little confused because it's literally referring to Raphael Arnaz's The Collected Works. Like the book as a whole. I was like, what? Um, but then I realized this is a mini biography. So when they're quoting one of the works in the biography, of course they're going to footnote it. So fun fact, there's footnotes. They are not just citations, they're also notes because this gives us the footnote for the book, um, which is a little interesting because it's in the book. But then it says, <laughs> I'm just saying you might not have needed the full citation, but it's handy that it's there. So if you were writing a paper, the citation's already written out and you could copy it. And then there's a note with it that Raphael's work cited in the introduction and in the translation below are identified by the item number in English. Here, this one is CW201. Um, and it, it does give you a nice little introduction to him. I, I'm just gonna read you the quote in the first paragraph to give you a little introduction to him. Um, because this is a book unboxing and we're already 16 minutes in. But this is going to draw you into the saint if you haven't heard of him and you've watched this far. God alone, how difficult it is to understand and leave these words. But once you do, even if just for a moment, once your soul has realized that it belongs to God, that it is his possession that Jesus dwells within it, despite its wretchedness and weakness, once your eyes are open to the light of faith and hope, once you understand the purpose of life, which is to live for God and for Him alone, there is nothing in the world that can trouble your soul. God alone, how sweet it is to live like this. These words capture the inner current within St. Raphael Arnaz's life. God alone, solo Dios, was his battle cry. It is also a brief door he left open behind him, an access to that which we often can't name, but for which our hearts ache. Even though Raphael's main intention in writing was to expand his soul in prayer and praise to God, he also desired that those who happened to read any of his words would come closer to God. He had received abundant guidance from the writings of great spiritual masters, such as St. John of the Cross and St. Therese of Avila, St. Benedict, St. Bernard of Clairvaux, and some of the main proponents of the Devotio Moderna movement. Now, I've never even heard of that moment, so I'm going to have to go ahead and look that up. And it, it tells you then on page 22 that he was a rich young man of the 20th century. And he weighed all of life's poss all the possibilities that life offered him against a single offer. Follow me, Matthew 4.19. He sold everything and followed the master who was calling him. Most of us would have liked to have what he found as he advanced on the path of discipleship, love, peace, and joy. However, we carefully try to avoid the struggle involved in the process. That is why, even though Raphael is not a complicated writer, there is something counterintuitive in his writings. If we are aware and honest as we read through his letters and meditations, we may realize we are experiencing a similar interior resistance to what we often feel when we, we hear the Beatitudes, something like, are you sure there is not an easier way to happiness? From the many valuable lessons that can be learned from the writings of the saint, I believe the main one is the secret of the cross. Only by our walking the way of the cross is love set in order in us and our desire for lasting happiness fulfilled. You can see, yes, this introduction alone is written in a very accessible style and just completely draws you out. And again, this is just a short biography. Um, how many pages long is it? Well, it starts on 21 and... Twenty one and goes to L I. Is that fifty one? It's an L. Yes, yes, it must be. It must be page fifty one. So the biography is about thirty pages. 
And then there's the note on the translation. I'm just going to read the introduction to that for you as well, just to let you know. I have grounded my approach to this translation in the values that Raphael himself embraced as the governing principle of his life in the monastery. The vows of obedience, stability, and fidelity to the monastic way of life outlined in the rule of St. Benedict. While Raphael was an oblate who never formally made these vows, he nevertheless lived them. And as his translator, I felt compelled to follow his example. For translators, the value of obedience is obvious in that we voluntarily bind ourselves to the style and message of our authors. In this project, that meant obeying Raphael not just as an author, but as an editor and designer of his own work. For this reason, the selection of writings presented here is comprehensive, omitting only a few letters from his youth from which a representative sample has been instead has instead been taken. A series of logistical letters to his parents and drawing tutor, three postcards, a stray page from his student agenda, and three undated scraps, including two comical poems that do not lend themselves to translation. Otherwise, we have sought to present as complete a picture of Raphael's spiritual journey as possible by representing his writings across a variety of genres and audiences. While the majority of Raphael's writings are epistolary letters, including letters, postcards, and dedications written in books or on the backs of holy cards, he also kept journals. In some of these journals, he privately prayed, reflected on his own spiritual journey, and joked that his prolific writing was a way of channeling some of his chattiness within the loneliness of the infirmary. This is lovely. I will tell you, I am delighted to report that the Oxford comma is in full use in this book, which makes my heart happy. Um, the translator's note is lengthier than I expected, so it's... But it's like, it's like five or six pages. My bookmark just fell out. It's not really a bookmark. It's, it's a St. Maximilian Colby prayer card with relic that I had put in here for good reason. And I'm a little disturbed that it fell out. Um, the collected works, when it starts, you can see it's pretty obvious where that starts. And let's see for the chapter. Oh, it is pretty easy to see where... The section starts so it's much clearer here than in the table of contents um, I do think that if I was wholeheartedly reading this let me see here I would need some friends here with me oh these would be perfect so I have little sticky note tabs that I can put on so I can quickly um, see I can mark the sections, and now even if I close the book, I know where that is. Ta-da! That section. Oh, I can put one of these on where the map is. Look at me geeking out here. Put a different color for the map. So here's the map. I might switch the location and make it the top one. Um, or the table of contents. So these sticky notes are something that's going to make this. Tabs are going to make it something more accessible. Now, if you need a label, can you write on these? does warn you that flags, they're called flags, may mark some surfaces or lift inks. Test it before using. I don't know if you can write on them. But there's also these plain sticky notes that are already cut and you can use similar to tabs, but you could actually maybe write or put a small symbol on so you know what, what it is if you don't have a color-coded symbol already. Um, when, when I was getting my first master's, I literally had a color-coding symbol. Like blue, if anything was highlighted in blue, it was a definition. So like my maps might have been done. I might have used a blue tab to mark the maps. Or if there was a glossary in the back of the book, it would be marked by the blue tab. Um, so I had a whole color-coded system. Lists. Lists were always green. <laughs> so if you have a system, you could mark it off. Um, here's another one of the illustrations that caught my eye, flipping through quickly. Um, it is interesting. Remember in the back it said, or in the... The translator's note, she said there was something that just did not translate well. You can see there's actually a sample of the saint's handwriting in the back. Um, oh my goodness. Here he is both as a child and as a young adult. He, in fact, I believe he died at age 27, so he didn't live very long. And yes, he was ill. He lived during the time of during the beginning of the Spanish Civil War and he got diabetes. 
Um, the influence of his aunt and uncle is very important to him, as well as I think the aunt and uncle, if I remember correct from the biography, lived in Avila or near, and so that's how he found out about Therese of Avila, Teresa of Avila, and so there's that. Um, yeah, so I figured it out a little late earlier, see number 46, so collective work number 46. This book is very reminiscent of our Franciscan, I call them the Chunky Monkeys, the early documents of St. Francis, and this is done um, similar. So up in the pages, if you're looking, like over here, it says collected works. So big, perhaps you've forgotten what book you're reading. You wouldn't have forgotten. Um, but it does tell you what section you're in over here. So it's not the actual work you're in, but the section. That's lovely. So that's telling you you're in section seven, Foolishness for Christ. Yep, so it's always telling you the selection on that side. That is lovely. Thank you, editors and the layout editor, especially for that. That is super duper helpful. Um, you can see sometimes... There are quite lengthy sections of footnotes. So let's see, are there any end notes as well? No, but in the back it does have the addresses. Right, what was it? Oh, this is not at all what I thought it would be. Um, may have to mark this. So addresses, what, or addressees, addressees. It's people who got the letters. So if it said Rafael Arnez Sanchez de la Campa, that's Rafael's father. Mercedes Baron Therese, Raphael's mother. Oh, so it tells you if it's his aunt, who they are, his cousin. It even tells you like down here, Fernando Baron Osorio, Raphael's cousin, Leopoldo and Maria's son. So, it, oh, oh my goodness, it tells you who his friends are and the different monks, which you might not have guessed. The timeline is back on page 717. So he was born in 1911 and he where did he die? He died in 1938, but then it has um, his beatification process in the timeline as well. And he, in fact, was canonized by Pope Benedict the 16th on October 11th of 2009. Then in the back, even though we had the artwork listed in the front, in the back on page 719, it tells you about the photographs. Um, and then, oh, and then it, it, they are the photographs. That's kind of funny, right? Oh, well, that's the way they chose to do it. That's a little odd to me. But um, And then the bibliography starts on page 725. Um, interesting. I'm going to have to see what those are. Maybe he refers to all these works. It is, it is several pages. So let's see. One, two, three. No, I've lost count already. One, two, three, four, five. It's about five sides of a page of a bibliography. Sorry, this one over here. About five of those. Um, and then... And then it ends. So God bless you, friends. I think this book will bless you. Um, if you've heard of the saint or you haven't heard of the saint, I think Franciscans are going to love it. This is a walkthrough for people who are considering getting this book because I will not lie to you, this book is expensive. Um, the price on the back is US $79.95. So it is expensive. So I'm delighted to be able to give you a walk through it. If you have any questions, um, Obviously, I'm not going to like send you a page of the book or something. But if you're asking, hey, is this in the book? Is that in the book? Perhaps I can look it up or answer some questions or formatting questions. The cover is lovely. It's one of those velvety covers. So yeah, it's like a cardboard, you know, paper, hard paperback. But it's one of those lovely, soft, smooth. I, I don't know. I'm such a geek. I love the feel of these books. Um, it is lovely. Um, some people like to see the binding on the books, so I will show you that. It's an expensive book. I'm letting you see it. Um, I do think the tabs may be the way to go in here instead of a bookmark because it is a thick book and it is expensive. Um, I am probably going to use these and just leave them on. I'm not going to try and take them off because I do think bookmarks, if you have multiple bookmarks marking sections, it's really going to junk up the book and may mess with the binding, and I want to keep this very nice. Um, What's the typeset? I'm, does it tell us in the beginning? I'm guessing it's 12. I am wearing my reading glasses. You know, my blue glasses are my reading glasses. So, and I have no problem with this, but it is a little smallish. Um, I'm trying to see here if I can see. Sometimes they tell you the font they use. 
It does not, but I am delighted to give you some other information. At the bottom um, of the, <laughs> totally losing it. The, the, you know, the page that gives you all the citations and stuff in the beginning. At the very bottom, it says LC record available at HTTPS dot, and it gives the location. There's a lot of numbers on here, so I'm going to put it in the description below. There is an ebook record. It says ebook record. What does that mean? So you may be, this may be available as, as an ebook. It does say there's an e, there's print, ebook, paperback, and an EPUB and a PDF version. So there are multiple ways to buy this book. I had somebody ask me that because um, because of vision issues, she only reads things on her Kindle and it's not a straight up Kindle version, but there is an ebook available. So I'm glad to report that. I'm gonna have to add that to the description and I'll have some of these. Uh, I, I'm not sure what these records mean that are available, but this is available in multiple formats. Yay, I know a lot of you were asking that. Um, should have. I wish I had noticed that in the beginning. I've never seen that listed that way before. Um, so now I know to look for that. Very exciting, very exciting. I think you're gonna love this book, friends. His writings are lovely. Um, we may have a, a few more videos about him as well. He's kind of reminding me a little bit about John Bradburn mm, in some ways. And so we're gonna have to see. We're gonna have to see, friends. God bless you for watching this far and I hope um, St. Raphael, oh, I would love a little prayer card for him, I think. But we're just going to say, St. Raphael, pray for us. And may God bless you and keep you, make, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious. And may the Lord bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, friends.